This episode of Behind the Video is brought to you by the Independent Media Network. The Independent Media Network helps journalists and content creators create their own jobs by building sustainable online businesses. If you're an unemployed or underemployed journalist or content creator, visit imnct.com for more information. Hey everybody, pull up a seat to the bar because this is Behind the Video episode number 21. We've been doing this now every week for 21 weeks and we're glad you could join us once again. And joining me as always are my two lovely and talented co-hosts. We have Goldie Chan. Hey Goldie. Hey. And we got Tim Street. Hey Tim. Hey, 21 weeks. This this is like a weight loss program or something like that. (laughs) Yeah, Has any of us lost weight? <laughs> I, I, I've lost 45 pounds since I started doing this show, believe it or not. But you do look great, Tim. That, that's because I, uh, I've been eating healthy. And tell us, tell us the secret. Eating healthy, has that been... Yeah, it's kind of weird. When, when you tell people that in your, fa- your friends and family, when you tell them that you've gone vegan, they treat you like you've joined a cult. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you have done something really wrong by eating healthy. And it's amazing. It is such, it is, it, it's like, and then the next thing that happens is that they become obsessed with what you're going to eat. And they go out of their way to like help you find something, and you know, and they they get really worried about it, and they get really concerned, you know, because these are people that love you, but they it, it it it's crazy, and you should just try it, even if you even if you you, you aren't going to go vegan, just just as a joke, tell your family you're going vegan, and see, <laughs> see the reaction. Out. And 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 we just recommend do not start juicing. Goldie's, try, Goldie's done that, and you can follow yeah, her, her, yeah, her trials and tribulations. What I found, I, I lost 45 pounds last year, and I kept it off, knock on wood. Um, people thought I was sick, which mm-hmm. is really, because they, they, th- they didn't see me. I, apparently, I was very well distributed, so they didn't see me as heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you lose 45 pounds, uh, it, people notice. So it's, yeah. uh, Well, it's, it's also interesting that you, after you start losing weight, you notice other guys that are like your or were your size and you're like wow they could you know i mean i still could lose 20 30 pounds and i would still be healthy um so you know my my goal is not to have my belly overlap my belt buckle i i think that would be a good healthy weight right to not have your belly over your belt buckle that's it so i I still have a way to go i'm gonna try to lose 50 pounds i'm gonna beat you both (laughs) (laughs) no don't do it (laughs) that'd be a little dangerous for you (laughs) but that's okay i'll just get rid of some body parts i don't need (laughs) you, you look around in our community and there there are quite a few people that were uh that are they're at the same weight that I was when I started doing this. So uh, we'll see if it catches on. I could see a Tim Street weight loss show on YouTube making uh, making a fortune. So oh, I would hate that. That would be horrible. And, Don't uh, wish that on me, Juan. And I just got a chat from uh, Brian Parker, our friend, who, who tells me that uh, that's not why people thought I was sick. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> point noted. Uh, but we, uh, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. And Goldie, let's start with you because uh, we were talk- we, you were frazzled last week because this was a week ago today. You were planning your big premiere. So the premiere has happened. Yes. People showed up. So let's, let's hear about it. How'd it go? Um, so we had actually around 300 RSVPs. We were completely uh, RSVP'd out uh, for the party itself, um, which was quite exciting because that that almost that rarely happens. I feel like for a web series premiere that isn't necessarily tied with um, you know a household brand. So we were already excited about that, and then um, come the actual day itself we actually had full house. So we had almost standing room during our screening. Um, and we think we had around maybe 150, 200 people actually show up, which is pretty good for, <laughs> for the number of RSVPs we got. And uh, we had a red carpet. We actually had Monopoly money that people could play with. And then we had um, the screening and nobody left. <laughs> so that was good. <laughs> Um, and Tim Street was there, which was, of course, very lovely to see him. Um, everybody got dolled up, got on their tuxes, and afterwards we had an after party at a suite in the W, which was also really um, hilarious because when we were cleaning up, we realized that somebody had taken all the toiletries. 
<laughs> from the room, which I guess I shouldn't be surprised by, but I was a little surprised by. So they took everything, huh? Because my, my grandmother yeah. used to used to do that. She would steal like everything from any place she went to. So she would she would take the dishes off the plane. Like you know, they used to serve dishes on flights, and she we had we had dishes and we used for leftovers that said property from, of Delta Eastern Airlines. Airlines. Yeah, Delta exactly. Airlines, nice. <laughs> so well, that's great, Cole. That sounds like it was. Uh, now, how, how's viewership so far? You're you're on YouTube and other other streaming sites. Yeah, how, so we're on YouTube. Been? I didn't, I haven't checked um, today, but we basically. We unfortunately, oh, I love you, YouTube. We launched on a day that they had essentially unannounced maintenance. Yeah. And so during this maintenance day, they did not accurately track view counts <laughs> or allow comments or likes. Oh, really? So, so, so did you lose view counts or did they, are they going to restore those later? They're, they're going to restore them. So the view counts, they're going to be back restored. So right now, I still have no idea because they told me... Um, 17th and the 18th they would basically be delayed and so but we we only have like a couple comments on episode one because no one could physically comment or like it which is a little frustrating um that it just happened to be our launch day but uh so far so good we got i think around 4500 views on the first day if the numbers are accurate, and then um, about 7,000 views by the second day, and we released two episodes, so that's combined views. But um, most people who watch episode one are actually going and watching episode two, so that's good. We're excited about that, um, and we're just actually about to start our podcast uh, roundtable, so we're about to do the podcast circuit outside of, of course, our beautiful behind the video. Of course. Um, you, you know, Goldie, I'm, I'm curious, you know, what's the story behind Cost of Capital? What, what can you share with us? How did, how did this project come together, and, and who are all the players that are involved in it? Sure. Um, so it actually originally started as an idea between uh, my friend and I, Brian DeCesare, who's the writer on it. Um, and he loves serialized TV, so I said, why don't, we, why don't we write a show that deals with the audience of your site? So something related to investment banking. So we actually sat down, and we honestly we brainstormed for about two months straight just to get the rough ideas out, um, and then uh, kind of came up with, with rough six episodes and then just went over it again and again and again, and then I brought on board uh, Allison Venor, who's our producer, and then kind of pulled together the rest of the team from there. So it was, it's been a long journey. We started, I think, in June of 2011, and we are just launching now. So the lifetime of a, <laughs> of a web series, even just a simple six episode one, can be super long. Um, yeah. And what, what's kind of the goal and the business model behind it? I mean, where are you, what's the best thing that can happen? I think for us right now, we actually didn't necessarily want to monetize season one. We wanted to get it out there and get the view counts. Um, I think that the best thing that could possibly happen is that we do pull in the right kind of sponsors um, and or the right kind of network interest for season two. And we have actually turned down a couple of distribution offers on the net um, because we really, if we're going to put on the net, we want to give it out for free and ad free. So um, I know, strange idea, but uh, this is kind of what the entire team has wanted to do and I'm really behind this, um, which is a luxury <laughs> but it's great to be able to share yeah, for free. It, it seems like you're fitting right into my analogy of the uh, free ice cream shop. I'm, I'm a little concerned. <laughs> I know. It's, um, it's actually been really great because people think that we are actually a network TV show that happens to be on YouTube. So people keep asking us what channel we're on, um, mm -hmm. where they can watch us on, on TV, or they're, they're asking... Um, what film festivals we'll be showing at, even though we aren't a film. Um, so we're getting a lot of we're getting a lot of strange questions, but um, well, we it are definitely definitely has a high interest. production value to it. I mean, the cinematography is is really nice. Who who is your uh, your cameraman, your director of photography? 
Um, our DP was Adam Valencia, and he is absolutely wonderful. And actually, we ended up choosing him because he has a very, very similar style to our director, um, Jorge Urbina. And so they work together really well, which is super helpful because as opposed to the director saying, I want this shot, you're not understanding me, um, they have such similar tastes that he's like, I want this shot, and Adam's like, great, I have already, I'm already on that. I've already done that shot. So, so they were finishing so, each other's creativity, it looks like. Yeah, they are. Right. They are. And so it's it's actually been really great for me as the EP because I don't have to step in. I didn't have to step in as much and, you know, kind of deal with egos and uh, <laughs> conflicts. There's egos much. in show business? Of course. <laughs> no, not at all, Lon. Oh, not I thought it was just politics that you had to deal with that stuff. So. Just politics. Yeah, right. Wow, that's great. And I, and I, I think, too, that the, the, the cost of production is – is lower now than it's ever been, right? With all this equipment that is that is really good and accessible. Yeah, I think it. I think that I could not have done this project on this budget, maybe even five, definitely not ten years ago, but de maybe not even five years ago, I wouldn't have been able to create this kind of high quality project. Um, and and yes, Tim, your ice cream shop analogy is definitely noted uh, in. And it is something that we've been thinking about um, on our end. And we are, once again, I think that we're in actually a really wonderful place and that we actually have gotten interest already. So we are just kind of seeing what develops as we get more viewership. Merchandising, merchandising, action figures, <laughs> you know. Uh, T-shirts. Ferraris that you can, you know, put the logo on. You, you, you'll, find, you'll find the, uh, the path, right? Uh, that's great. Well, Col Goldie, congratulations. It sounds like uh, you. you've really done pretty well. I, I, I had an interesting trip. I, I flew down uh, fri fr over, I should say, Friday, uh, last Friday to uh, Chicago for the Block by Block Community News Summit. And this was a meeting of people doing hyper-local news sites across the country. And there was several wow. hundred people there. And yeah, it was really cool. And you know what it felt like? Um, and I wasn't there for this, of course, but uh, it felt like the original homebrew computer club where the personal computer was kind of born you know it's like everyone's starting out they're all having the same problems they're you know they're struggling for revenue they're really working more from passion than than really and lon are all point. these shows hosted on youtube or are they hosted on other platforms as well these are actually most of these are, are community news sites so so oh. a lot of them are doing um just text you know their 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 wordpress sites or, or one of those things although a lot of them were starting to do more video uh, mainly because they can enhance their written story with a video of, of what was going on. Um, some folks are, you know, instead of using those, those audio recorders to record an interview with somebody, they're using their iPhone and recording a video that they're putting up as well. And you know, there was a lot of talk about that. And, uh, and you know, some folks are doing some amazing streaming work. There's a site out in, uh, I believe, Austin, Texas, that streams just about everything through a WiMAX card that they, they have plugged into, <laughs> into their laptop that they carry around wow. all over the place. So uh, there's just so much going on. And on the independent news side, it's, it's really hard because what's happening is, is that the economic model doesn't support a large corporation covering a small community anymore. Uh, so a lot of these journalists, who are not, you know, not all journalists, but a lot of journalists now are, are finding themselves out of work and, and they're starting their own businesses and from scratch where they're reporting and, every, and doing all the things that they need to do. And just kind of like in your instance, Goldie, you know, it doesn't cost anything to distribute content. The real cost is, is time, uh, time to sell ads and time to write our articles and maybe freelancers that they have to hire. And there's quite a bit going on. So uh, this was um, uh, sponsored by the... Uh, uh, RJ uh, Institute, and this was the last year they were sponsoring this this uh, this summit. This was the third year, uh, but there's a new group called the um, is an association called Lion, which will be uh, a group of independent news publishers forming that will begin to pick up the uh, the baton here from uh, from the RJ Institute and continue running running this uh, this summit and other other events. And they're trying to get health insurance for. Uh, for you know, group buy for some of these local news sites and whatnot. So it's pretty exciting. There's, there's a lot going on both in entertainment and in news and so many opportunities. So 
uh, it was really a fascinating week. So I'm looking forward to getting more involved with uh, what those folks are doing. So we're doing a lot of that here in Connecticut. So well, Lon, it sounds like you should start having regular Google Hangouts with uh, with your colleagues. <laughs> yes, uh, you know we 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 there was a lot of lot of love for Google Hangouts there, and and surprisingly, a lot of folks aren't using it for what we're using it for, which is kind of the. Uh, the talking head show, right? That that there's there's great ways to do a news analysis, great ways to bring in newsmakers and whatnot without having to have a lot of friction to create those those broadcasts. So there was there was a lot of interest in folks from that, and, and we're act, we're actually probably going to be doing a little seminar for folks to uh, show them some of the some of the hard lessons we've learned here on behind the video producing this show every week. So uh, it'll it'll be it'll be neat. So yeah, last week was a tough one. Yes, that last week it was the the gremlins were in the Google server room, so we had a a hard time. So folks are going to get a double a, a double header this week because I, I'm still trying to edit the the other show, I'm running around like a madman all all week. So, um, but uh, we should move on to some things that are happening out in the world of video, and let's start with the broadcast TV shows. We are in the autumn, which means it's time for some football and uh, the NFL. Uh, dominating a lot of the ratings this week. Although number four on our list of top broadcast shows was The Voice, its premiere, and that had a pretty good, some pretty good viewership. I watched that a little bit the other night. It's always fun to watch that. I like Did how the judges. Did they switch out the hosts or the judges? Uh, I heard I, they switched to them out. I think so. Most of them were still there. Um, so I know uh, who was it? Uh, a couple of the pe folks that were there last time were. We're here this time, but they may have swapped out one or two of them. But what's neat is that I, I like how they, the, the judges don't face the talent, so they can't be um, uh, ju judging their looks, just their, their, their voice talent, which is pretty, pretty cool. I know Tim's uh, slated to appear on, on The Voice as a, as a talent. Yeah, I'll... Uh... Oh, we lost Tim's audio. Oh. I'll be hiding. I'll be hiding uh, behind one of the chairs, so you. Can be able to see. <laughs> he he won't be performing. Tim will be a gremlin on the Voice. <laughs> Here, here's here's go. though. Here's a little factoid. I went to college with Javier, who won last year. There you go. He was an RA with me. We were both RAs, you know, resident assistants, you know, the local const, const, uh, constables, if you will. Um, and we would go out for these staff outings, and we had this. We went out, to, went out bowling one night, and they had like a karaoke machine in the in the bar there. I probably told this story already, but um, Javier belted out a song on that. It was it was something. People 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 took notice. He had talent even then. Uh, over on cable, uh, we got college football and NFL, although the Sons of Anarchy is at number four, and that's an FX show. Tim, do you have any, anything to add on Sons of Anarchy? Uh, I think, uh, I think the, the lead character, Ron, Ron, played by Ron Perlman, has a surf shop in Venice. So oh, interesting. At least, uh, but I'm not, I'm not positive on that. And wasn't he in a movie called Hellboy? <laughs> he may have been. He may have been. <laughs> okay. But it is growing in, in, in numbers, and it's uh, the first time I've seen FX on this list in a while. Um, but uh, the college football uh, primetime is number five with ESPN, Sons of Anarchy number four, and the NFL uh, on the NFL Network number three, and ESPN dominated that. And it's interesting to see the NFL becoming more of its own, a distributor of its own content, perhaps less reliant on the networks as they once were. And I think as internet proliferation continues, that might even get, uh, more prevalent uh, as you can buy the NFL packages on Roku and I believe on the Apple TV now too. So, so Goldie, do you Shazam? You, you know what? I always get really frustrated with Shazam because I know if I'm, you know, anywhere in my neighborhood or the neighboring neighborhoods, AKA Los Feliz or Echo Park, if I'm trying to listen to some hipster indie music <laughs> <laughs> I can usually find on Shazam, but if I'm trying to actually figure out to, if I'm trying to Shazam classical music, it almost never can Shazam it. So that's what I find hilarious about Shazam. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it doesn't always work. And then I'm surprised when it actually does work. Um, and there was a story in Digital Trends this week where Shazam is now um, going to a, a support television programming, as they say, on just about any channel at any hour. So... Uh, and I know a lot of shows have been putting these Shazam logos in there, which I, I guess, Tim, is, is the second screen deal. Is that what they're doing yeah, with this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it really 
I think Shazam's going to become a really important player in television, not only because of second screen, but also in terms of finding a show. As as things get uh, you know put out on different devices, and you're you're trying to find stuff everywhere, and you're going to come across stuff that looks interesting to you. You might be in a TV store, you might be at a bus stop, and and see something, and being able to Shazam it and find it and know what it is, and and figure out how to consume it is going to become more popular. Uh, I think the second screen, though, is the first step. And, and, and what's so important about that is that with Shazam, the tablet that you're using, if it has Shazam technology into the app that is, is like a read-along or a watch-along app, with the TV show, it's able to sync content on the tablet with the TV show. So that's really important because right now if you want to um, broadcast live on television and on the iPad at the same time, there's going to be a delay of about 30 to 60 seconds between the, what's on television and what's playing on the iPad. And that's just a technology limitation uh, when it comes to getting that content um, from wherever it's originating onto the tablet. There's buffering time and just... Um, but I, I, the other thing is what, what would really be interesting is if the tablet actually becomes the first screen uh, because if the, the content was sent to the tablet first, then it could actually sync with the television. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see if that ever happens. But Shazam's going to be the way that, that these two screen experiences are sewn together. And they've made and some smart moves. Of tablets, though, has anybody switched to the iOS 6 yet? I did. I did yesterday. And, you know, it, it doesn't do all that much for me uh, at the moment. I, I think the, the do not disturb feature is pretty nice on the phone. That's a good one. Um, and you can, you can specify people who can break through that. So if my wife calls me and I'm on do not disturb, it'll, the phone will still ring. Um, so I say that publicly so that she knows that I will never block her call. Um, so there, there's some good features there. The, the photo stream, I think this might have some potential down the road if they add video. You can now add uh, photo stream albums. So it, I could take a group of pictures and share them with Tim and, and they can, that could be a private share between between the two of us and we can add Goldie in as well if we wanted to. If they could do that with video, I could imagine a really great way to share video by, by stream, you know, basically streaming your photo streaming video clips from uh, one iOS device to maybe somebody's Apple TV or something and you could have some really cool subscription opportunities there. That's, that's some of the stuff I've seen with it. My, my iPhone 5 comes in tomorrow. I have a professional have you, obligation to uh, to buy one. So have you uh, have you heard any problems with OS six? I I haven't yet, but I'm I'm waiting to hear of some. The big ones I've heard, and not so much a bug, but but there's some concern over the Maps app, and that it's not as as detailed as Google's uh, version was that was on the I, iPhone before. So a lot of folks are hoping that Google releases their own uh, I, iOS Maps app like they had for um, YouTube. So there's now a, a distinct YouTube app for the iPhone, not for the iPad yet, which is a bit of a bummer because I use the uh, the YouTube app almost every morning on my on my iPad to catch up on my subscriptions. So Hopefully they'll they'll make some changes there, or at least get get that YouTube app updated. I've been using Flipboard, which does a pretty good job of of keeping track of my subscribed YouTube uh, shows, and that might be my new my new path for YouTube on the pad. But it seems like it's more about what's what's been taken out of the iOS six thing than than has been put in. Uh, but so I far, I think we're going well. to just maybe see what ends up happening in this continued uh, skirmish between Apple and Google. I think you're right. That thermonuclear war has the fallout is still is still landing, and unfortunately, will I think, the power be gone? And and like there'll be a show <laughs> where people roam around with no power. There could Perhaps be. So, Tim, there will be a show called Revolution, and um, there will, it'll be another apocalypse show. And I think that's that one is premiering on. Is it NBC or CBS? Yep. NBC, yeah. and I and I believe if you have a you can you you could watch it ahead of time on some of the uh, streaming networks. And there was a our Producer Jason Perrier found this this little editorial in the Baltimore Examiner where the where uh, the author looks at um, whether or not this you know they're always comparing shows to become the next Lost and saying that it's it it you know they can't promote a, a complicated show anymore without people you know aff affiliating that with Lost and I, and I was as I was reading it I was remembering um, back in the 80s the Twin Peaks phenomenon where it's all people would talk about was this complex show called Twin Peaks and that if you missed the the first three episodes you could never get into it and it looks like Revolution is going to be one of those things where they keep just enough away from you to 
uh, to, to really want you to keep watching more. And it seems like there's somebody holds the power to putting the power back on and hasn't done it, right? Um, but I'm also thinking back to some other shows that I sort of got into. Um, there was, uh, the, and I'm forgetting, of course, at this point, but uh, there, was, there was more than a few where they had a really good storyline. I think like Flash Forward was one of them where everybody passes out at the same time and, and the, the show didn't have the ratings, so it got canceled and you never found out what happened. Um, so, you know, let's, let's hope that they, uh, they, can, they can build it forward there. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But perhaps uh, the author has a point that, you know, matching um, shows up with Lost might not be the best way to promote yourself. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, I agree. Uh, although it it is by the same guy that did Lost, right? J.J. Yeah, Abrams exactly. Doing exactly. It, so, I mean, you, what are you going to do? I feel like right? that's a fair comparison, right? Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, for sure. And I have a feeling you're going to have a scene where somebody's going to have a computer and they're going to have to put, push a button each <laughs> yeah, push right. a button every 20 <laughs> minutes. I don't know. They'll have to um, have that, 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 that uh, right, that, yeah, that little yeah. nod, nod to, the, to the past there. So. And I hope, and you know, speaking of the past, I, yep. I do think we have uh, some uh, some of the past still on our uh, our list of uh, of movies uh, yes. this week. Those those um, timeless action stars are still hanging on to the number five position on the box office. The Expendables two brought another three million dollars. Not not a lot by box office standards, but I think that would cover a few mortgages, right? Um, Lawless is number four. Uh, the Possession number three. Number two is, and it's funny, our, our list is backwards this week, but number two is Finding Nemo um, at uh, number four, and Resident Evil Retribution is at number five this week. And I have, really have no compelling interest to go see any movies at this point. So, uh, But there are some coming up, and uh, Dread, Judge Dredd is making a comeback. And, I, and this is a, another reboot of a franchise. It's called Dread 3D. Did you ever see the original? Wasn't that with Sylvester Stallone, speaking of... Aging I action think so. Stars. Yeah. yeah. So that was before Goldie's time, back in the 90s. Definitely way before. Uh, way, way before. I was maybe a... Kindergarten? Years. Kindergarten. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't have been able to get into that movie at that point. So um, I wasn't even born yet, guys. What are you wow. talking about? <laughs> there you go. And uh, How to Survive a Plague is the top talk about, talked about movie this week. It's actually a documentary about how activists uh, turned uh, AIDS from a, this is a quote from the description, uh, from AIDS from a death sentence into a manageable condition. Uh, and that was a 295% jump in interest this week on the IMDb charts. Uh, a couple others to watch, Unconditional and End of Watch were also pretty high on the list. So some stuff coming down the pike, but still nothing really that grabs me here. So I'm just you know becoming what's horrible is I actually this for some reason reminds me of um, the Book of Mormon, which I just caught uh, here in Los Angeles as soon as you mentioned AIDS, which is terrible <laughs> because they have one song that basically is I think a, a shout out to Rent. So oh, interesting. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Uh, and I guess Google and YouTube and some other sites are going to start selling Fox movies. So it looks like the, the movie companies are beginning to catch on to the fact that people might want to stream stuff as opposed to getting them on plastic discs. And it looks like, according to Business Week, that uh, Fox and 20th Century's Fox Studios will be adding TV shows and movies such as Family Guy, Glee, and X-Men, which is nothing new because those are all on Hulu, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but they're going to be available for purchase or rent in the United States on uh, the Google properties, so that's another another nudge in that direction. You, you know, it's so funny to me that this is even news. I mean, like, could you imagine if somebody said, oh, they're going to make Fox movies available on DVD at Target. What? Like, you sell a DVD, you sell it everywhere, you know? But for some reason, the uh, electronic sell-through just hasn't been of that same mindset. And, and it, it's it's just starting to happen now where it's like, if you make your stuff available for everyone everywhere, any place they can possibly buy it, maybe you'll sell a little bit more instead of having it stolen. Exactly. And and I just I, I just pray at some point that it'll just work across all devices. So you don't have to buy an Apple version and a Roku version and an Amazon version, that things will just kind of work. Although we're starting to see those apps. Amazon's app now is on just about every platform with the exception of the Apple TV at the moment. So there's hope, but it's still, you know, not as not as portable, especially if you want to watch it on a plane or something. So 
We'll see what happens on that front. One other note on new movies. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter has a little story looking at why the Oscars timetable change is bad for movies. And it looks like the Academy's calendar changed on Tuesday. So the close of nomination voting um, has been moved from January 13th to January 3rd, and nominations move from January 15th to January 10th. You would normally think a couple days isn't that big of a deal, but the article hypothesizes that moving back the start of the phase uh, of phase two voting from February 1st to February 8th, nearly a month thereafter, might not seem that significant, but make no mistake, they could have a major impact on the award season and the viewing habits. I guess there's, you know, the, the weeks and when you drop these things are really important. And if you change the nomination weeks and release dates, that could get everything all in a, in a muck. And well, it, it also doesn't even matter. Other, <laughs> it, it affects other award shows too. I think the DGA moved their award show or their nominations because of this change. So, oh, really? Uh, so it's yeah. messing up everything. Yep. And people aren't going to the movies anymore anyhow. So let's, uh, <laughs> I wonder what's gonna, what, that, what that'll do to everything. It's going to make it even more screwed up than it already is. So, uh, so know that that's happening. Hey, uh, YouTube has some stuff this week. And at number five is the really cool trailer for the new Lincoln movie about President Abraham Lincoln. I think we could all use a good uh, uniting uh, figurehead to, uh, to look up to these days. So that is uh, out there on the Lincoln Movie ch uh, channel on YouTube. Really great uh, trailer there. Um, this, this was funny. I think we talked about this last week, but, but apparently uh, it was really well received on YouTube. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel's skit where he takes an iPhone 4 and out and, and convinces people that it's actually the 5 got 11.1 million views this week and speaks to Apple's... Uh, Apple's movement there. Uh, and number two on the list was that uh, controversial movie that we also spoke about last week uh, that um, many say uh, in, got the riots uh, started across the uh, Muslim countries across the world, and that is available there. And now the actress who didn't know she was making that movie when she was making it is now suing YouTube and the, the anonymous maker of the film. So this, this story will continue for some time. Uh, 10.8 million views uh, as of uh, today on YouTube, and I think a lot of that is curiosity. Most of those uh, likes and dislikes uh, buttons were, were hit in the thumbs down direction, so most people were not big fans of the film there. So quite a story, Tim. Is there a lot of talk in Hollywood about this right now? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, Jon Stewart had uh, Salman Rushdie, Rushdie on his show who... Uh, you know, 20, 25 years ago was uh, given a death sentence by the Ayatollah right. um, because a of a book that he wrote. And uh, so he was on with a new book that he wrote that's kind of uh, about that time. It's, it's, uh, it, it's written as fiction, but it's really his story of what happened to him. Fascinating stuff. So check that out. And in happier news, ads on TV and online, according to Business Insider, are about to become the same thing. And maybe Goldie will appreciate this because you got a show to sell. Uh, big brands spend, uh, this is from the article on Business Week, uh, tens of billions of dollars uh, advertising each year because it's the ultimate medium for reaching a large audience with a message for the masses. But the audience is changing. So a lot of those ads are now moving into other channels. And one of the things that we've talked about on our ad network here in Connecticut that we're doing for the news thing is, is saying to people, look, you got to make sure that those first five seconds have a bulk of what your message is going to be because YouTube viewers can skip the ad after five seconds. And if you're showing nothing relevant to your brand in that short span of time, you're losing out on the message. Whereas if you have it in there and somebody does skip the ad, you know, you're getting a free impression from YouTube at this point because they don't bill you until... 30 seconds in. Tim, are, you're, you work in the advertising world here. What, what are you recommending to ad clients to uh, enhance their, their ads for the, the web? Well, pretty much the, the type of advertising that we do is, is more of an enabling technology um, that allows people to seamlessly serve commercials into a live, linear, or VOD stream that they control. So it's not really about YouTube. It's about controlling your own inventory. Uh, and, and as a publisher or a broadcaster, being able to deliver on all these new connected devices using the same ad ops workflow that you currently have. But in, in terms of an advertising message, I totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, you know, if, if you're doing some warm, fluffy fuzzies at the beginning that don't uh, keep your, 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 or don't get your message out or keep anyone interested, you're just wasting your money. 
uh, with these YouTube ads. So yeah, I mean, really, the the best possible situation would be to have something that has a a message that you can really get across as to what your product is, what the value proposition is, but also have some type of spectacle or engaging thing that's drawing them in and. That's really hard. I mean, we're getting down to that max headroom blipvert now. Right, yeah. So uh, uh, I, I think it, it's great for the ad agencies because it's going to make it really challenging for them. And uh, but at the same time, I'm sure they'll rise to the occasion. That's probably another thing Goldie doesn't remember is max headroom. Nope. nope. <laughs> Look him up. He was, he was you, quite you know, the spokesman. You know what's really funny is if you watch the original Max Headroom, and, and for our listeners and viewers, you should go watch Max Headroom and then go check out uh, our, our famous uh, video blogger friend out there, Jose, who you might better know as the guy with the little ducks named Zay Frank. And uh, if I was going to cast a, a new Max Headroom, it would definitely be Zay Frank. <laughs> Check it out. And for those uninitiated, Max Headroom originally was a Coca-Cola uh, ad that they turned into this like uh, dystopian future sci-fi show that that ran, and and it was illegal to turn off your television in that in that world. It, you, know, you were constantly bombarded with with corporate advertising and everything else. It was pretty wild. Um, I think we're there. I think we are there. <laughs> we're walking around with screens on our phones and all that kind of stuff. So now our last story here, and Goldie, I wanted to get your take on this. Um, uh, we're seeing again this shift of of people, be, different groups, hardware manufacturers becoming studios now. So the LA Times Entertainment section reports that Microsoft has hired CBS's Nancy Tellum to form an Xbox studio that would get uh, content and entertainment uh, exclusively distributed through the Xbox uh, because it, there's so many of them in people's homes and. They're finding that people are starting to watch long form video on them. So, Goldie, how did how did how does this impact what you're doing? Do you do you look at potentially making exclusivity deals or, or trying to get your content onto some of these game consoles? Um, answer yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it just depends, of course, on the kind of content that you're creating. But really, I like I always think it's just so smart to create for an audience as opposed to creating content and then trying to find a home for it. Um, it when you're when you're having platforms like Xbox that have a captive audience, if you can figure out the right kind of content for that audience that they'll actually sit and watch, um, and then you can monetize that at the same time even better, <laughs> right, right. then um, I think that's where you'll go right, as opposed to maybe creating the content and then once again trying to figure out where to stick it. Right, so you almost want to have a thought in mind as to what's the platform this content's going to run on. And that, that would, to a large degree, determine the length of time, too, right? Because Xbox being a, a uh, couch potato kind of environment, you could do a longer form thing, whereas if you're primarily on YouTube, there's a different attention span, right? Definitely. There's, um, there's definitely a different attention span on YouTube, and I actually find it really interesting um, that we've had as many views as we have on our show because it is quite long for YouTube. Our first episode is a little over 10 minutes, um, and that I normally would say never do. <laughs> right, right. But it's good, so that, that might be why it, it can get away with it, right? I hope so. <laughs> are, are you tracking the, 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 uh, the, the attention span meter on YouTube? There's that little feature, if you looked at that, to see if they're watching through? Um, no, and I will, I will definitely take a look. Honestly, all of Analytics has been down. Oh, um, for, that's right. for Monday and Tuesday, so I haven't been able to look at any any analytics. Uh, it said that we had zero views on our channel uh, yesterday, oh, so, so that, <laughs> which isn't that's, quite accurate. That's not accurate. <laughs> so no. hopefully that will get fixed, and hopefully that will also lead us to more discussions next week because we are out of time here. We we actually aren't really out of time, but we try to you know police ourselves because uh, it's the internet we could go on forever but then you wouldn't listen to us for that long so we will cut it off here but we want to um, certainly get you back here again next week and if I get the time right here we'll, we'll, we'll let you know that we record every Thursday at 8.30 a.m. Pacific 11.30 Eastern Time am I right? You got it right. Good. Um, so watch us live. Uh, if you follow us on Google+, Plus, you will do that. And you can uh, find me at lonsybin.com, which links to my Google+, Plus account. You circle me. I go on the air with these two, and then you get to watch us. And we're going to uh, 
be able to get you to call in again uh, very soon as well because we have to um, figure out some stuff with that. Goldie Chan, where can people find you and your excellent publications and new web series? People can always find me, tweet me at Goldie Chan, and they can find my new show on YouTube at slash cost of capital TV. Excellent. And Tim, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, one Tim Street, and be sure to, if you have an iPad, two or three, uh, download a free sample of my book, Vids, and uh, check it out. And I bought the whole thing, and it's great, and you will enjoy it thoroughly. Lots of entertaining. See, if you can't read for that long, you can hit a button and play video. It's it's like the perfect book for whatever your attention span might be. So check it out on the iBook store. And again, I'm at lonsideman.com, and we will be back again this week on Behind the Video, or next week, not this week, on Behind the Video, and this show is a wrap. Thanks for watching. Stories for this episode were compiled by producer Jason Perrier. Follow him on Twitter at J-A-S-O-N-P-E-R-R-I-E-R. Behind the Video is a production of Ape Digital Incorporated and the Independent Media Network, LLC. All rights reserved.